Hey guys, welcome back to the second part of the skeletal system. And this is Dr. Yu. Uh, welcome back. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is the microscopic structures of a long bone. So micro means small. So this is a very different than the gross structures that we talk about in the first part of the, the video. Um, so microscopic, those, those small structures, are very small, so you can't really see them with your naked eyes or right, without any instrument. So if you remember last time we talked about two types of osseous tissues, compact bone and spongy bone. And remember that compact bone is usually the external layer, uh, very dense, smooth and solid. And spongy bone is internal to that. Um, and there is a lot of open space in spongy bone that's filled with the bone marrow. So we are going to mainly look at the microscopic structures of a compact bone. All right. Um, so the structure unit of compact bone is called osteon. Okay. So when you think about the bone uh, synthesizing cells uh, who are producing the bone matrix of compact bone, they are uh, making, they're basically making osteons. All right. So what do osteons look like? When you look at this picture, down here, um, you see some circular structures, right? This is a one osteon and this is another osteon, but they're not really uh, circular because we're looking at the 2D image. They're really cylindrical. Um, so I'm going to use this as an example. I have, if I have to draw the entire uh, osteon, it will be kind of like this, all right? And then it's going to go down all the way until the end of the bone, okay? So this is, again, the structural unit of compact bone, okay? All right, now the second structure is, uh, which is part of the osteon, is called lamellae. So lamellae is pleura. So they are layers of a bone matrix within each osteon. Um, so for example, if you look at uh, this one over here, you see there's, this is kind of one layer, right, of bone matrix. So that's lamella, so singular. And when you look at the multiple layers, that's lamellae. Okay, all right. Now you may also have lamellae in between the osteons, like in between, like over here, that's also lamellae. All right. Next structure, major structure is called haversion or central canal. So that's going to be in the center of each osteon. So over here, there's a big cavity right there, and you can find blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerves in the uh, haversion or central canal. Okay. So those are the basic structures of osteons, which make up the compact bone. All right, now, now there are a few more structures. Osteocytes. Okay, so every time you see sites, that's probably indicate it's some kind of cell. So osteocytes are bone cells, and you can uh, find them actually pretty easily. So when you look at the, the compact bone, each uh, within each osteon, right? If I draw the whole thing, this is you know one osteon. So almost kind of in between two lamellae layers, you see um, darker line, right? So each spider-like structures like this. And you can actually see a, a cell nucleus there. This is a one osteocyte. Okay, so there are more kind of like spider-like. And osteocytes are actually live in chambers called lacunae. lacunae. Um, so this is one osteon, and then there's actually a little chamber, a little space there that's called that's called lacuna. So lacuna is a singular. So basically, they are the little houses that osteocytes live. All right. Now the last structure is called caniculi. So caniculi are actually this very um, tongue twisting caniculi. So those are the like a wrinkle like lines that you see here. So all those lines are caniculi. So those lines are actually little tunnels that can connect the multiple osteocytes. And this is kind of how they communicate with each other. All right. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, we're going to look at blood production in bone marrow. We actually mentioned this a little bit. So this is all, all about what kind of bone marrow you have. Right? So uh, first, 
know that only red bone marrow can produce blood, right? Can perform hematopoiesis. Yellow bone, yellow bone marrow is only lipid, right? It's just a storage site for lipid. So in children, all bones contain red marrow, even in the medullary cavity of lung bones, that's all red marrow. But as the child grows up, eventually the red bone marrow in the medullary cavity of lung bones is going to be replaced by yellow marrow. So that's what you see here, it's all yellow, all right? But lung bones still have a red marrow. Where can you find red marrow? At the ends of lung bones. So you can see over here, uh, that's a still red color, right? So that's still red marrow. And they, uh, the red marrow is found in the spongy bone, right, at the ends of lung bones. All right. Now, in adults, uh, as most of the, the red marrow has been replaced by yellow marrow in lung bones, um, they can still make blood, right, with the red marrow at the ends. But now the, the size for active hematopoiesis has uh, kind of shifted. So you actually... Um, have other bones that are very active in producing blood. And those are the irregular bones like your vertebrae, your bones of pelvis, uh, flat bones like ribs and sternum. Okay. Um, so you can actually see in this adult picture, you know, all those types of bones actually have a lot of red marrow. So they are very active in producing blood cells. All right, next we're gonna look at bone cells. So bone is actually a very dynamic tissue. Uh, it's constantly made and broken down according to need, right? Where you have to, you know, have more strength to resist uh, pressure and stress. So how do you achieve this constant remodeling? Um, so that's done by different bone cells. Okay. First of all, we have osteogenic cells. You know, genic, right? Like genesis, you're making things. So osteogenic cells can develop into osteoblasts. Osteoblasts. So that's that. So that brings us to the next type of a bone cell, osteoblast. Uh, so remember, this B kind of indicates built. So osteoblasts are the bone cells that synthesize a bone matrix. So they are known as the bone forming cells. Okay. So who makes your bones? Osteoblasts. And where do osteoblasts come from? They come from osteogenic cells. So these are the stem cells that can develop into osteoblasts. All right. Okay, next one is osteocytes. Uh, if you remember that we actually looked at osteocytes not long ago, right, over here. They live in lacunae, right, uh, in between the lamellae, the, the concentric ring structures. So the osteocytes are mature bone cells, mature bone cells. They actually come from osteoblasts. So they come from osteoblasts. So as the osteoblasts uh, synthesize the bone matrix, eventually they surround themselves with the bone matrix and they're not going anywhere. So they are kind of like trapped. But uh, it doesn't mean that they're doing nothing after they're trapped. They continue to monitor and maintain bone matrix. And they can send signals to uh, other bone cells like osteoblasts or osteoclasts um, to kind of tell them, uh, you know, what you need to do, uh, where you need to remodel the bone, you know. All right, the last one is osteoclasts, okay? So that's, is, you can remember that C uh, for cleavage. So osteoclasts, are involved in bone resorption. So basically they break down bone matrix so that you can rebuild, right, based on need. So those are the main types of bone cells. So again, remember uh, osteoblasts B for building, right, building bone matrix. And then um, on the other hand, you have osteoclasts, right, cleavage. So it breaks down bone matrix. 
All right, next is the chemical composition of bone. So we are going to look at, you know, comparison between organic and inorganic components. Now they are very different. They serve different purposes uh, in terms of a bone tissue. So the organic components include the cells, right? And some other organic part of the matrix. Um, but the main part, the main thing that you need to remember is the collagen fibers in the bone matrix. And so the collagen fibers are protein fibers. Um, they can be, you know, pretty big relative to other protein fibers. So they provide a really good resistance or resilience. So it makes the uh, bone more flexible and resilient. Okay, so that's protein uh, or collagen fibers uh, in terms of organic components. You also have inorganic components, and this is actually the majority uh, of a bone matrix, over 60%. And that's mostly mineral salts, and specifically hydroxyapatites over here. And that's basically salts of calcium and phosphates. So these inorganic mineral salts are very hard. So they provide a hardness. So that's what makes your bone really strong, like really hard, you know, compared to soft tissues or even cartilage tissues. So we kind of talk about this uh, a little bit. So this is kind of related to uh, the bone mass or, or density or density. So if you're, if the inorganic components, right, the, the calcium sulfates, those salts, especially the calcium is taken away from your bones, from the bone tissue, then it's going to make a uh, bone mass less dense. So you are going to experience a loss of the bone mass. And how can that happen? Remember, we said that, that uh, the bones are really serve as a bank for calcium. A bank for calcium because it's, it's it's a storage site for calcium. So your body has other functions that require calcium. Um, so your body may withdraw calcium from your bones to perform other perform other functions, or your body could you know deposit and store calcium in bones. So uh, it's a kind of constant process. Now, if you withdraw more calcium than has been deposited then your bone density will decline. Okay. And this will definitely happen to people who uh, have a deficiency in calcium or even vitamin D because vitamin D promotes the absorption of calcium. Uh, people who have those deficiencies are going to uh, you know, suffer a loss of bone density. All right, so we're gonna talk about a few diseases that are related to that. Now, uh, let's uh, practice with some questions. Question one. So hematopoiesis, remember this is blood production, right? So where is blood produced? Right, bone marrow, red marrow. This is easy because red is the same color as blood. Number two. So which of the following cells is involved with the mineral resorption? So resorption, you are breaking down bones, right? You're uh, kind of resorb all the minerals away from bone tissue. So this is going to be osteoclast, right? See cleavage, remember? And that's basically the same as breakdown. Number three. So basically this asks you the what is the structural unit of compact bone right because this is centered around so when you build the compact bones you are building bone matrix around you know this this particular structure so that's not going to be any of these bone cells so the correct answer is the structural unit which is osteon number four so the question asks for flexibility there are two main characteristics for bone. The first one is flexibility and that's provided by the organic components, especially collagen fibers, right? And the second characteristic is hardness. So hardness is provided by inorganic calcium salts, right? Calcium and phosphate salts. So mineral salts. So flexibility, that's going to be collagen.
Uh, so these are all mineral salts, calcium, magnesium. Uh, elastin, elastin is also a type of protein fiber, just like a collagen. So it's a smaller than collagen. It's usually found in organs that needs to be kind of stretched and needs to recoil back. So usually found in things that, that are going to be stretched a lot and it needs to recoil back. Um, so where can you find elastin? Usually in these places like blood vessels or the walls of blood vessels. Because every time the, the blood that goes through, especially when you look at the arteries, uh, the blood is going to stretch your blood vessels. And then after that wave passes, then your blood vessel wall will recoil back. Uh, you can also find it in skin that's make that's what makes your skin really kind of not bouncy but if you press it it can come back right? question five so this is um, kind of long question which of the following processes explains why an individual that has suffered a broken bone and is immobilized for an extended period of time experiences bone mass loss so remember, we talk about that the bone uh, is actually a, a tissue that's very dynamic, right? So it goes through resorption and building, you know, uh, all the time. Um, so which one will cause a bone mass loss? Now, if you don't move for a long time, if, you, if you're immobilized, then it doesn't add, you know, stress uh, or pressure to your bones to make your bone weaker. So actually exercise uh, actually kind of helps uh, your bone become stronger. So if you are immobilized for a little while, you don't have that, um, the, the signals or the stress that can make your bone become stronger. So you will probably experience a bone mass loss. So which is the correct answer? If you, if you experience bone mass loss, that's mostly the orga inorganic mineral salts, right? The loss of inorganic mineral salts. So when you uh, go through the answers, demineralization. So D means you're losing those minerals. So the correct answer is D. Kyphosis is actually an abnormal curvature of your spine. So I have a picture right here. So kyphosis is uh, specifically when your spine has this abnormal kind of outward curvature. Okay, so that's kyphosis. That's what that's what kind of gives you a like a hunch back. Muscle atrophy. So this is about bones, right? It has nothing to do with the muscles. Ossification. Ossification is uh, almost the opposite of demineralization. So uh, your your body is making osseous tissue. So it's it's not the correct answer. All right, the next topic is about joints. So we're going to go through the different types of joints real quick. Now, based on structure, we can classify joints into these three categories. The first one is a fibrous joint. So in fibrous joints, the bones are held, are held together by dense connective tissue. Okay. So you see it's called a dense connective tissue, right? So a really tough type of connective tissue. So this is what can really kind of hold your bones together so they don't get separated, you know, very easily. Second type of cartilaginous joints in this type of joint uh, is the cartilage that kind of connects the bones. All right. And the last one, this is the most kind of uh, compli complex type of joint because you have, you know, multiple structures to form the joint. So this is called a synovial joint. And this is the pretty much the most common joint, um, what everybody is really familiar with. So in synovial joint, you are going to have a joint cavity. Okay. Um, over here, it's really just a kind of introduction of the terms, arthrosis, um, junction of two or more bones of the skeleton. So basically arthrosis just means joint. Um, so a lot of times you will hear the word articulate. Okay, so articulate really just means that uh, two or more bones join together to form a joint. All right, let's look at some examples of fibrous joints. A very good example is actually sutures. 
sutures. So sutures, you find sutures in the skull, right? So sutures are made of a fibrous dense connective tissue, which hold your skull bones together. Now, remember I said this tissue is very tough. You need that, right? Because you don't want your skull bones to kind of, you know, separate from one another and there's a gap. You can also find the fibrous joint in between ulna and the radius. So these are the two bones in our forearms. So uh, those bones are also kind of connected or held together by dense connective tissue fibrous joint. The last example is actually the gum, right? So this particular type of uh, fibrous joint is called a gum phosis uh, based on the location. So your teeth are actually held in the sockets by dense connective tissue. So this is actually a type of a joint. And now again, uh, remember this fibrous joint is very tough, right? And this is what keeps your bone, your teeth in the sockets. So, so you don't just randomly have teeth falling off. That will be really bad. All right, so for fibrous joint, it's immovable. Because you don't want any of these things to move around, right? You don't want them to be loose, so immovable. Second is cartilaginous joint. So remember, the bones are held, to, are held together by uh, cartilage, right? So this is actually fibro cartilage, a, a type of very tough cartilage. So you can find a cartilaginous joint in your spine or your vertebral column. Um, so in between the vertebrae, in between the bones, you see there's a disc, right? So that's a disc of fiber cartilage. It's very resistant to compression. So it's a very, very good structure to, ha to have in your uh, vertebral column. The next one is pubic symphysis. Um, so this is your pubis bone. Okay, over here, this is your pubis bone. So in between these two bones, again, there's a disc of a fiber cartilage. Okay. Um, so for cartilage, cartilaginous joints, they can move slightly, okay? They can move, but it's very slightly. So think about your spine, you can, you know, do some movement, right? So it allows you to move uh, a little bit. And also for pubic symphysis, especially when a, when a woman gives birth, this can be kind of moved a little bit, right? Can can open up a little bit. So the last joint type of joint is synovial joint. Uh, so there are a few characteristics. So first of all, the adjoining bones are covered in articul articular cartilage. Remember articulate, art articulation refer to joint. Okay. So the, uh, the, the cartilage that covers the ends of bones that form a synovial joint um, is called articular cartilage. So when you look at these, there are two bones, right? form this particular joint. And then when you look at the ends, this kind of blue color, that's a layer of cartilage, okay? That's the articular cartilage. The bones are separated by joint cavity, right? They don't touch or anything. Um, there's no kind of like solid structure to directly connect them. So there's a space in between the adjoining bones. The joint is enclosed in an articular capsule. So the articular capsule is over here. So it's a layer right there. So that's the capsule. Now you're gonna ask, so what is the layer that's internal to the articular capsule? This kind of orange color layer, that's called the synovial membrane. So the synovial membrane can secrete a synovial fluid, synovial fluid. And this fluid is very important because it lubricates the joint, minimize friction. All right, now all synovial joints are very different than the other two types of joints. They are diarthrosis, don't worry about the term, but basically means they're freely movable, right? You can move your wrist, you can move your elbows, you can move your knees, they're freely movable, a, a wide range of motion. Um, so here's a, a, like a, some additional information. I don't think T's will ask you this, but just in case. So you have a, a hyoid bone. Uh, it's actually uh, in your neck. So hyoid bone is the only bone in the body that does not articulate with any other bones. So it's hanging there. There are tendons, um, muscles attached to it. Um, so again, that's the only bone that does not form a joint. 
we need to look at ligaments and tendons to know the differences between those two, because I have seen questions on the differences between those two structures. Uh, so the, the difference is actually very uh, straightforward. Uh, remember, we just talked about joints, right? So you have a joining bones. So ligaments, well, the, the ligaments connect bones to bones. Okay. So when you look at this joint, now external to the articular capsule here, uh, you will have some really tough connective tissue. So that layer of connective tissue is a ligament. Okay, so again, ligament uh, kind of connects bones. And the tendons attach muscles to bones. So when you look at this picture, is that this is a piece of muscle, skeletal muscle right here. And you see that white color part at, at, at the end of the muscle over here. This, this part is tendon. So the tendon attaches a muscle to, to the to a bone, right? Usually it's some kind of bone marking, some kind of you know, um, something that sticks out for the muscle to attach to. All right, so that's the difference. Um, ligaments attach bone to bone, but mus but tendons attach muscle to bone. Um, I include this picture um, because it has a, both structures. So you have a muscles, right? And there's a tendon. See, the tendon kind of keeps the muscle attached to the bone. And then over here, you have the ligament. So the ligament holds the two bones together. All right, the last part uh, is about common diseases of bones and joints. Um, so again, a lot of times these diseases are related to the chemical compositions of bone. So I have the information here um, just kind of uh, as a reminder. So the first disease is a brittle bone disease. So brittle means the bone is kind of hard, but it's a little bit too um, crispy, almost like crispy. Uh, very fragile, uh, very easy to break. So this is also called osteogenesis imperfecta. So the disease is caused by a lack of uh, collagen in the bone matrix. So without the coll collagen, you don't have that flexibility, right? You don't have that uh, resilience. So the bone is very brittle, very easy to break. The second disease is called osteoporosis. Now, you probably have heard this um, Quite often, uh, I know on TV there are a lot of ads uh, for uh, drugs that target this disease. So basically, it's a loss in bone mineral density. So you can think of it as kind of bone thinning disease. So this is often caused by lack of calcium and vitamin D in the body. Uh, we mentioned this, right? Without the calcium, without the, the mineral salts, your bone uh, just lacks that hardness. Uh, sometimes it's also caused by just natural aging, right? Especially for women, because you also have a, a you know decline in estrogen, which is kind of important for the uh, for healthy bones. So with declining estrogen and with aging, a lot of older women tend to have osteoporosis. Next disease is osteoarthritis. So this is about your joints. Okay. So this is a degenerative joint disease, and the degeneration uh, takes place in your articular cartilage, right? Remember, we talk about the articular cartilage right here. So this is a normal cartilage you can look at here, and then this is what the cartilage looks like uh, in the patient that has this disease. So you can see the cartilage is really worn out, right? Uh, so there's a lot of erosion in the cartilage. And when you look at this um, with the x-ray, you can see with a healthy articular cartilage, you have a good space right in between the bones. But as the cartilage is eroded, uh, this space is getting smaller. So you may get, you may have, you know, two bones that are too close to each other. And that's going to cause a lot of pain. The last one is rheumatoid arthritis. So this is also a type of arthritis, but this is caused by your own body's immune system attacking its own tissue. So it's autoimmune disease. So the immune system is going to 
uh, attack tissues, including the joints. Now, it doesn't happen just to the cartilage like the previous disease, osteoarthritis. It also uh, attack all kinds of tissues in the joint. So you may have bone erosion, uh, which eventually lead to joint deformity. So there's a picture right here. Okay. So again, remember, this is uh, autoimmune disease that causes joint inflammation uh, and also a lot of pain. All right, now let's practice with some questions. Number one. Okay, so skull bones, remember the sutures? It's which one? The fibrous, right? Fibrous joint. Radius ulna, that's also fibrous. Remember, that's the second picture on that slide. Bones of the pubis. Ooh, which one's that? That's the cartilaginous joint, right? Uh, so you have two pubis bones. And then in the middle, you have a disc of fiber cartilage. So the correct answer is the last one, right? Humerus and the scapula. So that's your shoulder, shoulder joint. And the shoulder is a type of synovial joint. Number two. So to answer this question, first you need to know what's osteoporosis. Remember that's a bone thinning. So you have a loss of or mineral salts. So that's the first thing you need to figure out. And then the second one is which cell causes a bone resorption or which cell breaks down the bone matrix? Osteoclasts, right? C for cleavage. So it breaks down bone matrix. Next question. Tendons connect muscle to bone, right? So this should be B. And ligaments connect bone to bone, right? On this slide, I just want to point out some of the typos in the official study manual. And I don't know if it's just kind of inaccuracy in the language or um, some other reasons, but um, I don't like some of the wording. So, for example, on page 128, the skull consists of mainly actually flat bones and not irregular bones. So most of the bones in the skull are actually flat bones. Remember, we talk about the, the frontal bone and then you have parietal bones, um, occipital bones, and those are all flat bones. Next one, knee and elbow, uh, to be accurate, they're really joints, right? They're not bones. Um, they, they consist of bones, but they're actually joints. So if they mean specific bones, um, like in the knee joint, patella is a special type of bone. Uh, remember, that's a sesamoid bone, right? And then other bones that form the knee joint, um, like femur, tibia, fibula, so those are going to be long bones. All right, uh, same thing for the elbow. So all bones forming the elbow are long bones. So that's humerus, aridias, ulna, those are all long bones. All right, good job. You finished lesson four, the skeletal system. So keep up the good work and I'll see you next time.